one. Well, hello, and welcome back to Curless Mania. Man, check this out. This is my first panel on my channel. And I I just, you know, I just did that. That was just, you know, it wasn't planned. Um, but we have quite a panel today for you. Um, and I'd like to welcome everyone to my channel. We, uh, I'd like to introduce the panel before we do anything else. So to my left, and maybe to your right, is um, Grant Arthur from Grant's Rock Warehouse. Check out his channel. If you if you don't know his channel, would you have been living under a rock? Come on. Well, you know, probably, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Um, to uh, the to hit the bottom of Grant, you know, right below Grant and my screen is Todd Evans. Welcome, Todd. Hey, everybody. It's good to be back here again. Absolutely, great to have hey. you. Back. And and below below me, down here, is John the Music Nut. Welcome, John. Hello, guys. I'm like Billy Squire. I'm in the dark today. <laughs> oh, my God. That's right. But you know what? Yeah. Billy Squire and Queen were contemporary, so I'm looking forward to this one. That's right. Same producers. Yep. When I heard... Billy when Squire heard, opened for Queen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I heard Don't Say No. I was like, this sounds a lot like Queen. Because it's the Mac is producing, so it's kind of the same. Not a big Mac guy. Todd, did you see? I did, you saw Queen, right? Back in the yeah, day, eighty two, eighty two, Hot Space. And was that just Queen, or was it was Bill? Did Billy open? Billy opened. I'll be damned. All right. And a bunch oh. of a bunch of of people, big mouth people I didn't like in high school said, "I'm going to the show just to see Billy Squire." And then, of course, the show came. And Queen just destroyed Billy Squire. Oh, I bet. <laughs> God, <laughs> I am so envious. was vindicated. But yeah. I am so envious that you got to see him. Freaking, that's awesome. I, I consider myself very lucky. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Queen was such an amazing live band. They're just unreal. I, I have some very terrible awful. pictures that I took that I'll have to show you guys sometime. They're awful, but... You can see <laughs> how far... But you I'm just, I'm just curious. I don't think we ever talked about it, but where were you? Where, how far I was about halfway you? back in the lower level. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. What a cool, cool. I mean, and where was it? Did you already say where it was? The Omni in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Oh, nice. Got it. Cool. Which is not there anymore. All right. Well, we are here. I never saw Queen live. I wish I had. That's one of my biggest. I wish I could have. I was too little. I think by the time they stopped. Well, I could have gone. I could have gone to kind of magic tour. And that brings us to the topic of today's video, which is two Queen records from the '80s: a kind of magic versus the miracle. Oh wait, backwards. There. Yeah. That's right. You can show the back of it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yes, so these are, we're doing 80s Queen today. This actually came up as a as a, uh, a topic a while ago. We were kind of just chatting about random stuff, and this kind of came up. I don't know how it came up, but it did, about, oh, Kind of Magic. Oh, that's not a, re a good re good record or something. And then Todd was like, oh, really? I think he said, like, well, what about, you know? Who wants I think I forever? said, who wants to live forever would like to have a word. I think that's what yeah. I said. Yes, and I said, oh, my God, you're right. That is a great song. Um, so that started the conversation, and then we've been talking about it for a long time. And finally, we said, "Okay, somebody do it." So, so I, I said, "Fine, I'll do it on my channel." So, so that's what we're doing today, and we are um, we're going to go around the horn uh, for each record. Um, and just a quick a quick history, like real fast. You know, we all know the '70s era Queen. We kind of know that story, but you know, by 1980, they were just a behemoth. I mean, after the game. Um, and, uh, another one bites the dust and, um, um, and, uh, crazy little thing called love. Those songs were everywhere. I remember when I was, I mean, I loved the game. I bought the game when it came out and I was so excited to have it. And it was just, I remember those songs just being everywhere and just being hot. Queen was a hot band at that point. They were on Saturday night live doing crazy little thing called love. Um, and I just remember they were already big and then they became massive. As we all know, they just became this massive band at that point. And um, so after a huge world beating tour, basically, they come back and they do their they're confident they're on top of the world and they do hot space in 1981 or 82, 82. 82. 
that right? 82. And um, which, you know, was divided, divided opinions. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a very bold move. They really went. I think they were so shocked that another one bites the dust was a huge hit that they went, OK, we can do that ton of music. And they kind of went, you know, they they did their thing on hot space. Let's just put it that way. And it was a little divided opinion there. Uh, and I, it's, it could be argued that they took a little bit of the hit on hot space. And it kind of was like things were a little bit different after that. Well, um, that, that ruined right? everything for them in the States, Tom. That yeah, ruined everything. Right, right. Yeah, I guess I'm talking States. Yeah, yep. Uh, and so they, anyway, they came back with the works, you know, and the works is kind of like a harking back a little bit to their 70s uh, heyday a little bit uh, with still some 80s touches to it. Um, and, uh, but of course they did the video for, I want to break free with that. And that alienated people too. Uh, it was one of those, it was, wasn't quite Billy Squire speaking of Billy Squire. It wasn't quite rock me tonight, but it was, uh, there were definitely a lot of guys, you know, in the eighties that were like, what is this They're dressing up like women and what, what is that supposed to be funny? Like, I don't get it. Yeah, I never thought anything twice about it. I thought the video was great. Made great. It uh, made me laugh. I thought well, it was I great. Too. I didn't care. <laughs> I, I think a lot of that was just brought up later. I don't remember anything like that at the time. Same with the Billy Squire video where he's in this pink shirt, prance around on the floor. Yeah, right. That was just another was, video. That was Look just another how, video. Yeah. Just it was. How, it's revisionist it, history. It, it, I, I, it's I, revisionist history. I think my biggest issue with the with the I want to break free video when it came out was that it wasn't more successful. <laughs> that they, right. I dug that. that. that song I thought wasn't it was more great. popular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, well, anyway, I did hear some of that grumbling a little there bit. There was. My, yeah. There, there the is. The 80s was a different time. People weren't as accepting of, but I could tell it was a parody and it was a send up. I could tell it was, you know, people that are intelligent, they know it's it's a it's a send up. The first thing I thought of was this is a, a parody of something that I don't know what it is. I'm not in on the joke. Right. Right. Exactly. And I people, thought it was like a British sitcom, but I don't. It was yeah, Coronation, Cor Street. Coronation Street. Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, so we didn't get Americans didn't get the joke. It was like, what? I don't understand this. Is it just them in drag? I don't get it. Yeah, so anyway, whatever. They didn't get it. And then there was some backlash for playing Sun City. They put that was another thing about happened. Yeah, I forgot about that. You know, they, they had apparently they played Sun City and it was like, you know, that was the whole I ain't gonna play Sun City. That whole like uh, little Steven thing. And that was a lot of it was, you know, directed at Queen. So um so anyway, so they're hitting some rocky times after having this huge, you know, time with the game. And it was just after this huge, you know, being the massive band that they were, they were hitting a little bit of rough patches. And then um, they end up, they come back and they kill it at Live Aid, right? We all know the story. At 85, they come yeah. they re, re, after being kind of like, I think even the band was having a little bit of problems. And then they, they group together for Live Aid and they just kill it. They're the best band on the day and they just kill it. And so then they all of a sudden there's wind at their heat back again. And they reconvene and they make a song called One Vision. And uh, that is sort of like a collaborative song. They all kind of throw in ideas and it becomes this kind of, I love One Vision. I think it's great. So that takes us to, you know, after One Vision, they're like, all right, let's make a record. So the next record ends up being Kind of Magic. And um, it's the last last album that uh, they tour for, um, 1986. And... Um, you know, it was actually it started as a as a soundtrack to Highlander. Um, I believe it started that way. And then right. it kind of turned into more of like, a, OK, it's not really a soundtrack. It's just a queen record. So that's what well, we can talk more about that. So I'm going to I'm going to hand it over to Grant. For, oh, goodness. For, oh, God. For kind of magic. If you're ready, Grant, go for it. Oh, I'm ready. Just brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, All right. On, I'm trying to be tactful. <laughs> All right, so everybody, if you follow my channel or if you've watched anything where I've spewed about Queen, you know how I feel about the 80s stuff. But I want to say I listen to these again because normally I don't, you know, these aren't my favorite records, okay? Let's be honest. I try to listen to them with an open mind, okay? And like uh, Tom said, this is the first record after Live Aid. Opens with one vision. The song totally kicks. It's catchy. It's memorable. Because I've complained about 
in the past, how Queen in the 80s, a lot of their material isn't memorable. It's not like the 70s stuff. They could write a pop song and you could instantly remember it. A lot of the 80s period, I don't know if you have to really sit there and force feed yourself with it or what, but none of it really takes me or I can really remember it. But after Live 8, I'm just assuming that these guys were on fire. Because you listen to One Vision, it sounds very alive. The guitars are blaring. You've got real Queen vocals, because when you listen to it, you can tell it's not a bunch of Freddies. It's the whole band contributing to the vocals. And that's what I want. Sounds like everybody is together. Um, the only drag that I... It's not even a drag, but maybe a, a, a critique is that whole little drum machine middle in the part. I don't need that. I, it's like, you guys are rocking, and then you're going to put in some fake drums. It was the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. So right there, I think we're in. We're hitting it out of the park. Kind of. Because the one thing, one of my complaints, and I've always said, is that Queen always was trying to sound like Queen. But in this example, with this opening track, it sounds like Queen, not trying to be Queen. And that could have been, well, like Tom said, could it have been because they didn't get along? You know, they weren't functioning as a band so much. I, I wasn't there. I don't know. But anyway, I think One Vision's a good way to start off. Um, then we have A Kind of Magic, which is a Roger Taylor song. And I listen to that and I'm going, darn it, I would have loved to have Roger Taylor sing this, but pretty much those days are gone. Freddie's singing everything. I don't know what the reasoning is behind it, because my in my Queen, the 70s Queen, I like it when everybody, Brian May wrote a song, he sang it. John Deacon rang, wrote a song, Freddie Mercury sang it. Roger Taylor wrote a song, he, he sang it. I like that interplay. I like the way they mixed it up. Well, we don't have here. And the only thing when I hear this kind of magic, I think, God, be great to have Roger sing it. But like I said, those days of, are gone. I think this track would have fit well on the works. You've got clean guitar sounds. You can barely hear Brian May play. It's kind of like Radio Gaga Part 2. And I made a point on the Miracle Notes is that why this is... Maybe I'm crazy. You guys can tell me I'm crazy. But why does all the Roger Taylor songs in the 80s sound like a variation of Radio Gaga? I don't know. Is it me? Probably. Probably is. I never really thought about it. But I think you're right. <laughs> Possibly. That's what I keep I, thinking. I don't think they do. But Okay. Well, all right. You can tell me I'm out of my mind. One year no, of love. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. One year of love, John Deacon, ballad with sense. Freddie sounds great, I have to admit, but we've got a sax solo. It's bland, not memorable. I'm checking out already. Pain is so close to pleasure. Wow, we are in the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Hot space part two is what I call it. Again, I've mentioned this before. Did they forget how to write songs? Because a lot of these songs, when I hear it, I can predict the next chord change. It's like these are rehashed. There's no surprises. Back in the old days, back in the 70s, ladies and gentlemen, there were a lot of surprises. But here there are no surprises. Are they just going through the motions? I don't know. I wasn't there, but it sounds like it. Um, pleasure is so close to pain. Oh, I already said close to friends pleasure. will. Sorry, my I, I don't have my glasses on. Friends will be friends. Thank God for Brian May. Thank the Lord. Brings it. I hear melody again in a Queen track. Mercury sounds good. I think this song's great. But then I keep thinking, oh, it'd be great if Brian May sang this. But that's fine. So far, this is the best track in the album for me. And at least it sounds like, well, I shouldn't take, I should, let me rephrase that. I think One Vision's the best track. This is second runner up because it does sound queen. It has all those elements that I've been trained to like over these years. 
Queen, heavy guitar. I want Brian May. I want everybody participating to make that Queen sound. And Lisa sounds like Queen. I can tolerate the keyboard flourishes on it. And I think I heard piano on here, boys. And I love it when Freddie is playing piano. Yeah. Yeah. He's but so I keep thinking it's great. But I so far I feel bad for poor Brian May because he must have just been bored out of his mind on this record. All right. Let me go. I don't want to take up too much time, but you, we are doing the queen in the 80s. So this is bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Side two. Who wants to live forever? What a great opener for side two. Todd and I have done a, a show on sequencing. What a way to open side two. One of the best tracks on the album. I dig it. I it, You get Brian May on here singing. I love it. And I love it. Very emotional. I love it that Brian and Freddie are trading back vocals. I dig it. I'm down. I'm in. I thought maybe side two's really going to recoup. Uh it's uh, this harks back to uh is this the world that we created on uh the works that's what i keep thinking that's, yeah so you know who wants to live forever is not all that original but you have to admit is this the world that we created with brian and freddie doing that oh, yeah kills me every time yeah. freddie mercury on this song smokes it's a powerful track it's excellent i have a lot of hope for side two Give me the prize. Heavy. What happened? I know this is for Highlander, right? Yes. Heavy. Obviously from the film, rocks hard, right? Is this up to 1970s Queen? No, but I'll take it. And I do hear, <laughs> oh God, I, I'm going to say it, but I hear big country guitar on here. Um, Is that good or bad? I don't know. It Back is what... pipe guitar. <laughs> yeah don't lose your head mercury mercury track joe arm trading but i don't really i don't know where I, it's a roger taylor song and i want to hear roger taylor and i don't want to hear rehashed zz top guitar or the works it sounds like rehashed works with zz top guitar i'm not interested uh Prince of the Universe, Mercury, bombastic drums, production, no heart here. We really need Roy Thomas Baker here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what would I rate this? Um, I think this so-so songwriting, nothing memorable except for three tracks. Not a bad album, but not a great album by Queen standards. So if I'm going to rate this, are we going to rate these, Tom? What sure, I, we didn't sure. go over this when sure, we go started. Ahead. No, go ahead. You can rate it. Yeah, we'll, we'll all rate it. Go ahead. Okay, because I'm thinking about the best, you know. Uh, Night at the Opera, for God's sake. News of the World, those are great records. I'm going to have to give this a 5 out of 10 because there's three songs on here that I think are really worthwhile and the rest... It's not bad. It's not great. It's not up to the standards we've had in the past. I expected more after the Live Aid performance, but that's okay. That's just how I look at it. Will I ever really revisit this again? Probably not. But uh, five out of, I'll have to give it a, it's, it's, it's all right. Fair enough. Fair enough, Grant. All right. All right. Let's move it. Let's move it right along to, uh, to Todd. Hey. Um, so my impression of this album, when I, when I, when it, back in the day, back when 86 or 85, whenever it was that One Vision came out, I was really excited about it because of One Vision. Um, my, my issues, I have issues with this album, but, uh, but I, my, my issues are kind of different from Grant's. So I'll go, th I'll go through it really quick. I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about One Vision. Uh, it's kind of already been said. It's a strong track. It's mm -hmm. got some... I'm not sure I, I like the little break in the middle either. I'm not crazy with the beginning of it. And usually I like buildups, you know, I'm, but I'm not real crazy with the noises and the sound effects and stuff no. like that. I think it's a little bit irritating at the beginning. I think back yeah. then I loved it, but uh, I don't, magic. you know, Todd, I don't want to interrupt. I can't help it. We're having a discussion. I don't think that intro is necessary. Do you? No, I it's not. They could have started the track. Let's really kick it and yeah, bring in the guitar. 
it, it's not there are people that do that better this is not the the voice from moody blues i think that's kind of right. what they were going for and it yeah. it's not yeah. you know it's it doesn't oh work my god that that's well. brilliant that yeah. is brilliant yeah yeah but uh kind of magic i think is a pretty good track um i think I think we have to remember, and I'll talk more about, uh, I, I probably won't talk more about it, but I was going to mention it for the miracle, but I'll go ahead and mention it. Do you remember that Queen had some information that we didn't have? They they knew about they knew about Freddie, and I think that they oh. were trying to have Freddie sing as much as, as he wanted to or that they could have. That, I'm speculating here. I think that's definitely true for the miracle. Um, but I'll talk more about that later because the deluxe miracle reveals some things about some tracks that got left off and didn't get finished and stuff like that. But uh, but uh, a kind of magic I like. I'll tell you what I don't like about kind of magic, and this is really what I don't like about the album. I don't like, I don't like that he says there can be only one. It 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 feels like that's forced into it. I feel like all the Highlander stuff is doesn't come natural. And uh, I, we're really going to talk about what I don't like about the Highlander tie-in when we get to side two. But uh, <laughs> um, I I kind of wish that it was <laughs> a little bit more subtle. Uh, but anyway, I don't have an issue with One Year of Love. I think One Year of Love is perfect as it is. I like the sax solo. Apparently, uh, John Deacon asked Brian May if there could be a sax solo instead of a guitar solo, and Brian May gave us approval for that. Um, I like the orchestration on it. I think it's I think it's a really good song. I think by this time, and we'll talk more about this two songs from now, but I think by this time, Deacon had gotten really good as a songwriter. And he always was good, but I think that his 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 gift of melody was really starting to get sophisticated. And uh, so I like uh, one year of love. Pain is so close to pressure. I I went through most of my life thinking I didn't like this song. I'm sort of turning around on it. I kind of feel like, I mean, it's it, it, it. I kind of put it in the 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 uh, the uh, sleeping on the sidewalk, uh, dreamers ball box, and so for a departure, it's okay. Um, I'm not crazy about how the rhythm section sounds. I don't don't really like the sound of the track, but I think the song's okay. Friends will be friends. I think is a top ten Queen song. I think that that song, I think it's a crime that it didn't get more attention. Um, and I, I think that it's one of their best songs. And I think the last minute and a half where they stop singing and it goes into the instrumental, I think is gorgeous. Those those chord, those chord changers are beautiful. And uh, I just think it's a really good song. I, I like it a lot. Uh, two Mercury Deacon collaborations in a row. And you'll see more of that when you get to the next album. A lot of collaborations. Um, Who Wants to Live Forever? I'm not even going to talk about very much. I think it's I think it's just exquisite. Uh, I don't have a, a adjective to express how much I love that song. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I think it's great that Brian and Mert and Freddie sing it together. Give me the prize. I really can't stand. I, it's heavy. I like that it's heavy. They sound like a heavy band, and then that's cool. But I mean, I hate the way it starts with the dialogue. And usually I love that. But for some reason, I feel like it's it's in the way. I hate that he says, I got something to say. It's better to burn out than to fade away. Is that from this movie? I Because it seemed to me like when I heard that. That's from Neil Young. Because I, I, I yeah, heard flappers. that when I heard that in 1986, <laughs> it was an eye roll. I was like, I just, I hate it. I Neil really Young, don't like Give Me the Price. The cliche. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I really don't like anything about that song. I feel like it's too Highlandery. It feels like it's just kind of shoved in there where it doesn't belong. Um Todd, I thought so it was an, I thought it was an outtake from the from Flash. <laughs> it does it Wouldn't does it sound be? like it sounds could like be. It. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it could be. I think if it was on the Flash, I'd probably like it better. <laughs> right. Uh, but, right. 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 But Flash Gordon, I'm sorry. Um, we get to Don't Lose Your Head. Don't you Lose Your Head. Again, I used to think side two of this album was really weak. And I do still think it's kind of weak. But I've warmed up to Don't Lose Your Head just a little bit. I have uh, uh, talked to people who absolutely love Don't Lose Your Head. Uh, I think when we did that show on Ryan Gavalier's channel, we talked about this album. There were a couple of people that were 
going on and on about how much they love Don't You Wish You Had. And I was like, really? But uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. I like it. Princess of the Universe, I think, is great. Um, I don't know if it's that great of an album closer. I feel like there was, other than Friends Will Be Friends being at the end of side one and Who Wants to Live or to live forever at being at the beginning of side two. I think that that those are the highlights of the sequencing, but I think the sequencing of this album kind of leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, so, uh, and it's kind of interesting, but that, and, and I wanted to mention this too. Uh, I wanted to say something more about like what I said at the beginning, I feel like this being half of a Highlander album and half of a queen album is, you know, unfortunate. I, I'm not crazy about this artwork, but I kind of get the concept. But then you've got all the singles, and all the singles have this other logo, which is like the Highlander logo. And so I remember thinking at the time, well, which is it? Yeah, there's there's another one there. And uh, and so uh, that's kind of something I don't like about it. Uh, band looks great in the photo, but... Uh, Right. I think this album suffers for being done in 1986 when movie soundtracks were a big deal. I think they got kind of got got pushed into doing that, and uh, I think it suffers for it. I would give it a seven. Okay. Okay. Now, seven. I, I know we talked yeah. about sequencing before, but I, you don't. I don't know how you would sequence this, Todd, to make it better. I think it, I think it's a challenge. Um, I think side one is okay. Uh, I think what I would do with side two is I think I would take Give Me the Prize off and mm -hmm. put two two more songs in. I mean, was there anything unreleased because... on here that we could swap out that uh, 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 not, not brain really. throw? No. Not really, not really because... At... Because there's an extended A Kind of Magic, there's an extended mm -hmm. Friends Will Be Friends, and then there's Forever, which is the piano version of Who Wants to Live Forever. And that's really kind of oh, it. That's it. it. So there's nothing. Yeah. All right. That's it. We got to we gotta live with what we got. Yeah. Um, so I, our... I think it's not as bad as the works. The works feels like they just stopped before it was done. But it's a, it seems a little bit more complete to me than the okay. words. All right. Well, Grant looks like he's, yeah, okay. I'm surprised. All right. Surprise. Okay. Well, well we've never really talked about the works. No. Uh, no. Yeah. On and off through the years. But uh, wow, you think this is a strong you, record? You can look at the vinyl of side two of the works mm -hmm. and say it's missing like two songs. I mean, you can just look at it. Is this and, a short go, record? I can't remember. Yeah. It's pretty short. It, it, mm. It's not that it's so short, but it's just, it It feels like it needs an extra song. It needs, needs one extra song inside one and two extra songs inside two. I'm sorry, we're on a tangent, but. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right. We, this is what we do. This is what we do on this channel. Um, but I'm going to try to rein it back in and say, let's go to John the Music <laughs> Nut on uh, your take on A Kind of Magic by Queen. All right. Thanks, guys. So. I've owned these albums since the mid 90s and I owned Miracle before Freddie passed. Um this album yeah it's I'm going to say a lot of the same things because um oh Spotty Queen 80s Queen is Spotty Queen to me. Um lots of scents um loads of sense on some of these songs however i think on on vision is a great opener i remember from the iron eagle movie when it was they play play down the iron eagle movie and i saw that in the theater so that's when i first heard one vision and um i like the way this starts out with the keys and it's got this really majestic feel and then the guitar kicks in i think it kicks i love the chorus I think this is a great rocker here. And, and I and I don't even mind the part where the synth drums come in when it breaks down. I like that part. And I also like how it ends, how they're going back and forth with the vocals at the end, too. I think this song kills. It's my favorite song on the record. Um, next song, Kind of Magic. We got that. It's very elegant. It's got that synth bass. You can, one thing about this album, you really hear John Deacon a lot. 
because a lot of this album is very pop <laughs> and when mm-hmm. their albums are pop you really hear john deacon and roger taylor at the forefront great bass line on here i think the song is cool i think freddie does a great job on the vocals um as especially as the song builds into that chorus i think it's really cool um very good track uh you got with uh ryan's guitar sometimes it sounds like like island guitar and sometimes it sounds like what brian may sounds like uh, but this is a very good track now one year of love mm, i it's a great performance by freddie um it's too mellow for me i like my queen to be more musically challenging and more fiery you know i like when they go all over the place yes 70s queen is it for me um it's it's tearjerker ballad you know you got a little bit of harmonies in there you got the sax well the sax streams 86 i mean you're a lot of sax and pop music then it's 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 okay it's not one of my favorites though uh pain is so close to pleasure you got freddie singing in that falsetto very poppy um it's okay Hmm. nothing to write home about um my issue is with the sequencing as well um i think i would open side two with friends will be friends and i would put give me the prize as the end of side one but getting into friends will be friends now as grant said okay we hear brian now he's brian in all of his glory excellent guitar work here love the chorus love the performance here from the band this is excellent um they do a nice change up uh nice change in the uh, keys and the key key signature there actually yeah it's which is really cool like that song a lot who wants to live forever i would have put this near the back of the album um, very solemn, but so well executed. Drama personified. Again, a lot of synths here, but the, the synths really work on this song and the, the, the synth strings in there as well, because I don't think they got a string section for this. I'm thinking that synths doing that. Um, if you love the Queen harmonies, this is the song for you on this album with those multi-layered vocals. This is that song. It is very, very good. Give me the prize. I'm with Todd on this. Um, yeah, it's heavy and it's sluggish. It's, it's bad. I mean, and even the recording on it, I mean, the rest of the album is sounds pretty clean. Here, this just sounds, I mean, I know it's from the Highlander, and that's why you got all the sound effects going on, the talking and all, but it doesn't, it's like they just threw it in. It doesn't fit. And and okay, heavier doesn't necessarily mean better. It's sluggish. It's my least favorite song on here. And I'm not a fan. And I and I like some harder stuff. Um, and I think this is really heavy on the pop and the synth music, but to me, this, this is the worst song. Don't yeah, lose your Brian head. May Brian May has said that uh both John and Freddie hated it. Yes, I heard that as well. I believe it. Well, I could imagine that during this time period. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Don't lose your head. That's just pure synth pop for me. I mean, you know, another great performance from Freddie, but the song just doesn't really stand out. I mean, I mean, everything about it screams 80s. It hasn't aged well. I just don't think it's a very well written song. Princes of the Universe slays. Killer closer. I don't know. Would I end it yeah, I'm with this? I don't know. It's an interesting closer. I don't know. It, part of me wants to think, who wants to live forever, but do you want to end it on a somber note? So it's hard to say. Maybe maybe it's, maybe it's who wants to live forever, followed by an unnamed, non-existent queen song that could have been a better closer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but this 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 kills i love the i love the breakdown here with the drum solo and and then it goes right back into brian may's guitar and then they go right back into the chorus this song kills i mean and it ends very abruptly 
um, which, you know, it doesn't have that big grandiose ending that you would expect from a Queen album. It just ends like like in a shot. Um, I like the, and then going to the bonus tracks that you hear, um, I like the instrumental version of Forever. Uh, who Wants to Live Forever? It's called Forever. I I prefer it as a piano song without tons of, I mean, I know there's still a lot of keyboards on here, but it's what's it's being led by a piano the piano i like it better well i don't know if i like it better than the original but i think it's very well done so this album yeah like i said spotty queen i'm in the middle here i would give it a six out of ten okay six out of ten so we have a five a six and todd you were set i was a seven seven so five yeah. six seven okay that's so, right all right well <laughs> it's time for me to chime in and my theme for this video is man i tried i'm trying i'm trying to like these albums I, it's like one of those I, I i listened to these albums quite a bit in preparation for this video both of them and i just want to make sure that i'm not coming in with any prejudice i'm just listening straight ahead and um I just agree that I, it's been said that it's just, it feels like it's like ugh, it's spotty queen. I mean, that's a good way to say it. It's half. It's like, it's like queen without the sugar or something. It's like a time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, um, okay, let's, let's do this. A kind of magic. Now is this fish? It's like fish nor foul. Like, is this, is this a Highlander soundtrack? No, it's not. It's a queen album. Well, wait, isn't one vision on iron Eagle as was mentioned earlier. So wait, there's two movies. So two movies, and then there's others. Then there's some others. It just it just feels like like what is this exactly? It um, feels messy. It's a little messy, and I think yeah. the band and uh, you can hear it on the album. In my opinion, sounds divided. I don't know that they're completely one with this record, like they were with other albums, um, where they I don't think they were. Maybe they were fighting kind of, you know, because they used to were known for fighting a lot in the studio. I don't hear a lot of. I don't know, push and pull on this record. I just hear kind of people doing their own tracks. Um, so, okay. I'm going to go down the track list. One Vision, as was said earlier, I love it. One Vision is a great way to start the album. I think it's excellent. It sounds like classic Queen. It, you can see from the video that they're working together. They're singing together. They're writing together. It's And, you, and it shows on the song. I love the song. Even the breakdown, I can kind of deal with that. It's, yeah, it's very 80s, but I can deal with it. Kind of Magic, love it. That's another. So it starts out really strong. The first two songs, I love Kind of Magic. It's a kind of magic. It's just very, very, uh, apparently it's a Roger song that Freddie got his hands on and, and changed it around. That's what I had heard um, and really improved it quite a bit and really made it hookier. Um, uh, One Year of Love. Uh, can't do it. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. Uh, Pain is so close to pleasure. No, I don't like it. I wish I did. I, I don't know. John Deacon is not my favorite on this record. Um, Pain is so close to pleasure. Uh, I, I mean, he's been... It's not he's, bad. I mean, he's done <laughs> He's done falsetto in the past. He's done falsetto, but I, I don't know. Friends Will Be Friends is... Okay, now we're back. This is a great song, as you guys said. Really good Brian May song. Uh, and I love the lyrics, you know? Sorry, go That's ahead. That's a Mercury Deacon song. Friends will be friends. Friends will be friends. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought that's all right. Fun. Okay. Never mind. Um. So they they redeem themselves on this one because I love friends will be friends. Um. It's a good one. Um. And uh, who wants to live forever? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Great way to start side two. Um. Really majestic and just I love it. I get a l lump in my throat when I listen to it. Um. Give me the prize. Generic rocker. Just does not sound like. I mean, yeah, it rocks. It's loud and it's quite trashy, but it doesn't. I don't know. It's just not. It's generic. Uh, don't lose your head. One of the worst Taylor tunes you ever put to. To I don't know. I just don't like it. I would. I just. It's just repetitive. It just don't lose your head. I'm not sure what those dudes were on the other channel were loving about it. I just don't like it. Um, and I love Roger Taylor. I'm a huge fan. I'm just not a big fan of that song. Uh, Princes of the Universe, I think, ends it really, really well. It's a great song. Uh, really like it a lot. Um, so I'm just going to say, very echoing a lot of the same sentiments, and I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. 
Very good. Yep. So, so well, let's move on. Let's keep moving. Let's move on to uh, the next album, which is the miracle. All right. Bro. I'll try to keep it quick based on time. 1989. Uh, is that 89? Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Oh, do you want to do the, sorry. What? If you want to like do an intro or something. Oh no, no, there's no intro. I just wanted to say, is it 1989? 1989, 13th yep. so, studio album. David Richards is producing and he was like the co-producer on the previous record. So the last one was Mac and David Richards. This record had five singles from the album. They must have thought a lot of it. I don't think so much of it. Um, it starts out with a party. And I, I, it starts out with party. And so far, Magic is looking like a better record to me. It's nice to have the heavy guitar in the beginning. You got drum machines. Where's the songwriting? And I don't think it's, I think it's, I don't think it's a good opener. It's not drawn me in. Uh, Kashogi, am I pronouncing that right? Kashogi, yeah. The ship. Essentially part two of Party, Bland. I, I, it continues on where Party left off. I really don't really have much to say about it. I get to the miracle and I'm thinking, John Deacon, John Deacon, John Deacon, please save us. And what we have here is a song. We've got a melody, ladies and gentlemen. Freddie sounds great, but it's more, it's memorable. Uh, and I am all about coming away with something and, mem and, and re retaining it. And I get this here. Now, would uh, this song have been better in the hands of the band ABC? Probably. But I, at least I'm, I'm good with the songwriting and it's, the best thing on the record so far i want it all which is a brian may song so you've got an anthem on this one this is an anthem is it a good anthem well that's for you to decide but you've got a lot of heavy guitar here and like john the music nut said if does heavy guitar necessarily make it good no you have to admit I want it all as an anthem. You could hear this playing at a soccer stadium in the UK for sure. It is memorable. Um, the only thing I don't, I made a note on here. I hear that ovation 12 string like Todd Rundgren used to use in 1981 and 82. And yes. I'm like, is Todd Rundgren on here? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that super like tingly, like really treble. Yeah, guitar. yeah. But uh, it's on here, but you know, is, is it, it's no, we will rock you. If you're expecting we will rock you, you'll be disappointed. But I will have to say, it's an anthem. I'll take it. It's fine. Invisible Man, Roger Taylor. And again, I said, why do all these Roger songs sound like Radio Gaga? This is not a good song. But I kind of like it just for the fact that they were bold enough to include it on this record. It's not a good Roger Taylor song. I don't dig it at all. Uh Breakthrough, good start. Breakthrough is I, I do believe that's is that side two is breakthrough side two. I think yes. so. Yeah, yes. I think that's side two. I might I didn't put it on my notes. Hey, breakthrough, Queen's vocals. You've got everybody singing on this track. Freddie's playing piano. It starts out great, and then the synth bass hits, and I'm going, oh god. It falls apart after that. Intro's great, but then it falls apart. And I'm my notes, I went, where are the songs? So far, I only have maybe two songs that are memorable. Rain Must Fall sounds like it starts off like a Duran Duran song. Um, and the thing is, listen, I made a note thinking with all these songs, they all sound kind of cookie cutter where you can kind of anticipate each move with the song. There's no surprises on here. Are they going just through the motions? I don't know. It sounds like it. Where is the, where is the excitement? Where is like in the seventies queen, you never knew what they were going to do. Right. There was a lot of surprise there. It's just like, all right, well, let's do a cookie cutter Duran Duran song. 
it's almost like they're cooperating too much and they're not fighting anymore for the songs that's what it feels like to me they've given up scandal brian may song i thought brian may brian may save us not good it's age poorly save no, good. Us. <laughs> no he didn't on there my baby does and you know it's a Mercury Deacon track because they all sound like hot space. This track is bad. If you like this type of song or this type of material, go buy hot space right now. Um, it makes me appreciate hot space even more. And I will go on record. I don't have a problem with hot space because Queen is doing what Queen wants to do, and they don't sound like a parody man. Go get the hot space. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, was it all worth it, Mercury? This is the end of the record, and I keep thinking, was it worth sitting through the whole album for this track? Not really, but this song has potential. Look, love the guitars on here. We've left the best track for last. Um, keep in mind, this is not 70s Queen, uh, but there's a melody here that sticks in your mind. I'd say this is the best track on the album, but I could do it without all the keyboard flourishes on it. But I think that there's really a good track here. Um, I didn't care for this record at all. I It's not, it's worse than A Kind of Magic, which I thought when I was going to review this, that A Kind of Magic would have been, I, I didn't care for that at all. I actually kind of like It's a Kind of Magic more. So I would give this a four out of... I can't believe I'm rating it this <laughs> low, but I know the greatness of Queen. And believe me, I love great Queen. This is not that. I'm going to give it a four out of 10. This, yeah, you're just comparing it against the rest of the catalog. Yeah, I'm I get it. trying not to. But right. if I even look at this as a pop record from 1989, it's the songwriting's not there. I wish I could say the yeah. songwriting was there, but it's not. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's, let's move it on. Let's okay. So um, go I'm top. going to, I have, I have one major negative thing to say about this record and I'm going to get it out right in the front. Um, I think Hardy and Khashoggi ship are, I think those two songs together are the worst start of any queen album. I think, I think they're big fails. Um, I understand what they're trying to do. You get a little bit of, uh, in this deluxe version that came out a couple of years ago, you get a, an original take of Party and you can hear them talking about it and you kind of understand that they, 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 had a, they, they had a point. They were trying to do something unique to open the album that they hadn't opened an album like that before. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Uh, but... I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make a, a statement first before I go any further. I think that we that the world needs to be kinder to this album. Um, I even don't think that the I even don't think that the cover is bad. I like the cover. I like the color. I like the font. Um, but one thing that I noticed, I listened to this the other night on uh, on uh, YouTube Music, and I don't know how if you're familiar with YouTube Music. But when you're when you're listening to when you're using YouTube Music, the app, you can click on the a little comment uh, button, and you can see people's comments about each song. And let me tell you something. You know who likes this? You know who really likes this album? Young people. Do you know what young people don't do? For the most part, they don't complain about drum machines. They don't complain about saxophones. They don't complain about synthesizers. They see the big picture. And there are a couple of songs on this uh, on this album. Was it all worth it? The miracle, the invisible man. That people just. I mean, there are like there are hundreds of positive comments. So, I think that this, that that this album kind of leads an alternative life with some fans, um, and I don't think that those fans are mainly American fans, and I don't think that they're people. I think that there are people in this in that. this chat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to insult anyone. I'm just saying they're different no. from us, right? But uh, I want to go on to say that I think that the four run uh, 
the four song run of the miracle i want it all the invisible the invisible man and breakthrough i think is as strong as queen gets i think those songs all four of them are are major wins um i think the miracle is beautiful and the miracle gets better and better the more you listen to it and one thing that you really have to do with this album they made a video for almost every song and the videos are incredible if you've never seen them the video for the miracle is are these four kids that they got to play the members of queen and it is the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life the video is just beautiful and the kid that plays John Deacon does a John Deacon impression and you don't even realize that John Deacon has a certain has moves until you see this kid try to do it and you think oh my god he looks just like John Deacon but at the end of it when Freddie does that part where he kind of he kind of sings back up with himself he comes behind the got the little kid that's playing Freddie and he sings that part and then the four of them come out behind them and like stand with the little kid versions it's a and, great video uh, it's, it's really it's really touching and really beautiful and it makes you like the song even more so i highly recommend watching that video um i think i want it all is great i thought it was great when the album came out i think it's a little bit predictable maybe maybe not super uh not super inventive but i think it works um i like the way it sound i like the way it sounds i like the way uh brian sings in the middle of it um, I really like that a lot about it. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it, but, uh, I, I, cause I think that's a relatively popular song with people, even if they don't like the album. So uh, I'll just move on to the invisible man. Uh, I thought the invisible man was great when I first heard it. And I think it's even better now. Um, I love how they name check themselves or each other. I think that's just great. I think that's really entertaining and fun. Um, and I think it's cool. And I think that you can tell it's a Roger song. And like we were saying before, I think that they were kind of in the in the moment of 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 thinking that, you know, we've got a lead singer. He's like the greatest front man in the world. Let's let him sing everything. I'm speculating, but I think that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, but another thing, too. And you realize this when you listen to this disc two of this the, it, that's called the Miracle Sessions. It it includes the banter before each of the demos, and uh, they were really working together here. They were they were getting along. I think they they knew that their days with the four of them, all being healthy and ready to go, were numbered. And I think that they were having a good time. Um, I think breakthrough again. I would put. Breakthrough is to me is probably a. Uh, I know that I put friends will be friends in a, in a top ten. I, I think breakthrough would probably be in a top fifteen. I think breakthrough is a classic Queen track. I like everything about it. And it's funny. One of the one of the bonus songs on the deluxe version is a version of breakthrough that has real drums and bass. And so I saw that and I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be great. And I played it. And you know what? It's not better than the one it's that's not. on the album. Isn't that funny? Isn't I that thought, weird? I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I want another one better. Yeah. But again, the video, the video, a classic video, one of the greatest MTV videos of all time, I think, is Breakthrough. And it's so good. And I'll talk about this, too, when I get to Scandal. But Breakthrough and Scandal you really get to see Freddie Mercury and all of his moves, like on all of his stage presence, really for the last time. Because that's the last time he's really healthy enough to pull it off. And man, he's just, his performance on Breakthrough on top of that tray, it's just great. It's just, it's fun to watch. And I think that it makes, kind of makes the song even better, which I all, I already think it's a pretty strong song uh rain months fall is okay i don't have any issue with it i never thought about it sounding like a duran duran song i suppose it does a little bit it doesn't it's not offensive to me it's a it's you know it's a it, it it changes the the pace of the record and uh i think it's okay where it's at i don't have an issue with it scandal is great scandal again great video they're standing in this in this set that looks like a giant tabloid 
And Freddy's doing all of his moves, all the spinning around, all the getting down on the floor and the limbo move with the, with the microphone and stand and everything. It's great. But the thing that's cool about Scandal that I didn't realize until I started doing some research on it is that the guitar solo and Freddie Mercury's lead vocal are first take. Mm, Which, wow. if you think about Freddie's vocal on this song, it's that, that's pretty amazing to me that he did that first take. Um and that's kind of one of the things about these later Queen albums that I that I think kind of gets overlooked is that Freddie is like cranked up to 11 as far as his intensity and his energy level. I mean, and there are some songs, you know, where he's doing the, the, the falsetto. Obviously, he decided at some point that he liked that and, and that he was going to do it a couple more times. But uh, and I think he and Deacon liked doing songs like that. But. But Freddie's uh, vocal performance on this album is really good. Um, My Baby Does Me, I could do without it, but I've warmed up to it over the years. And so I, I feel like it's, it's it's a little better. But uh, Was It All Worth It, I think, is great. I think it's cool that it has the little the guitar sounds from the begin from Death on Two Legs in it. I think that's really cool. And again... They did a video, and I think the video that they did for it is recent. I think that they did it like just a couple of years ago. But the video kind of goes through like the history of Queen. And so like they go through all the albums kind of with the album art. It's like animated. It's like computer graphics and like the 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 monster picks from uh, News of the World picks up Brian May and then the jazz logo spins around and stuff like that. It kind of goes through every uh album and it's pretty cool but apparently was it all worth it is really popular with queen fans probably not american uh fans like us but <laughs> apparently was it all worth it is like super popular one of the things i think hurt this album was that if you look at you guys have them i have mine too but it's over there if you look at the cds and this is capital's fault i i capital and uh uh Hollywood. Those tracks at the end, Hang On In There, Chinese Torture, The Invisible Man 12-inch version, they muck up the end of the album. They mess up the feel for the sequencing. And I used to think that this album had a weak side too, until I saw this one, and I went, oh, it ends with Was It All Worth It? Okay, well, that makes sense. That seems like a closer. But that's always bothered me. I am I know I'm wearing my Capitol shirt, but I think Capital didn't do this band right. And I think that if you're going to put an album, they, they work so hard on this. And I think if you're going to put this out, don't don't muddy the waters with a bunch of short instrumentals at the end, at the album. It, it always affected the way I looked at this album. And uh, I think that, that that was a mistake. Um, I give this album a nine. I liked it when oh. it came out and it's really grown on me over the years. Okay. But I think that those tracks three, four, five, and six, I think are as good as it gets. Okay. When did they put out that deluxe box set? All I've got is the Hollywood that was a 2022. Set. Yeah, this is the uh this is there's the Hol there's the Hollywood two C D, which was yeah. when they did all the rest of those. But then there's the Miracle Deluxe Edition. Which is uh, which is 2000, 2022. and that's when the really big box came out. Yeah, and I didn't buy the box. Oh. This is this is like the middle. That's the uh, yeah. That's the in between. And it, and it's really nice. It's got there's a lot of great band photos in it, and it's it's uh sorry Roger, and uh, it's uh, there's <laughs> some there's some there's some banter. There's an interview with them where they're all talking about the album and how they. We're getting along and what they were doing and it it comes across like they were having a good time and and uh yeah it's it's worth getting it's like how did i miss that did they do any other albums like that no just this one wonder why, they really picked that one. That one. why did they yeah. pick that i wonder when they put it out a lot of people bitched about it a lot of people were complaining if they're going to do that why pick the miracle why why do a deluxe i don't know version of such a crappy album and i was thinking in the back of my head maybe this will help people feel better about evaluate it yeah maybe i need that 
Right. <laughs> but I do like the, the idea of, of having them talking and you can hear them chatting about the songs and. Yeah. Like, and there's a song on here. I mean, it's not a great song, but it's a pretty good song. There's a song on here called dog with a bone that didn't make the album that, that Roger sings. And you go, oh, okay, well, that would have been kind of cool to have Roger sing. There's a song called, I guess we're falling out, which isn't complete, but if they'd have finished it, it would have been great. Uh, there's a Brian May song called I Know You Belong to Me that's pretty good. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. But for the most part, the songs, the the demo versions and the and the bit the versions with the different beginnings and endings that are the songs that are on the actual album aren't better than what they picked for the album. So was that did that come out domestically or was that like a yeah. British or it did? Well, you know, I'm not really sure. It says uh 2022 Queen Productions EMI. It so, did come out. It did come out on Hollywood and EMI in 2022. Yeah. But mine looks like a mine looks like British. Mine looks like an EMI. And the, the remaster was done by uh Bob Ludwig, like the the most yeah, recent. it's the 20, oh, 2011 it. remaster. Yes, yeah, the 2011 remaster. They said uh the band said at, at the time that, that, that they couldn't improve on the 2011, so they wow. that's where it's gonna stop. I'm just looking at the track listing. You know, we're all here just sharing stuff. It <laughs> is impressive. This box yeah. set is impressive. Yeah. It's got even more than this yeah. two disc one does. Yeah. I saw like a I saw Brian May do an unboxing of it. That was like, wow, it was monstrous. I probably should still get it. Yeah. Considering I'm the guy the nine in out the of US ten that you likes need to it. buy that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All but right, you've we'll got you've wait a minute, you've got the two CD set. That's what you bought, right? Is that what yeah. it is? Okay. Yeah, and it's got it's got a bunch of the extras on the second disc. All right, all right, cool. All right, John, let's move it over to you. What do you what do you think about the miracle? All right, very similar sentiments. Um, party is corny. Um, that's all I could say uh Kishog Kishogi ship um it's still corny but it's better because there is some swagger to the riff freddie sings the heck out of it yeah um a nice breakdown on in there too so i like this the miracle if you look at their catalog in the 80s i think this is the closest they come to 70s queen in the way it's written and all the drama and all the different changes throughout the song i think the bridge in this is fantastic the one thing we're all waiting for is peace on earth and an end to war very elegant i think this song kills um and then i like how it changes the pace again speeds up with brian doing his solo and then it gets slow again with the with with the end and how angelic it sounds i think it is superb i want it all was the big single here in the u.s it should have been a bigger single it's sad it didn't hit the top 40 that's how i feel i mean yeah, it is a little predictable but it's just a great rocking track and again we get a little bit of a breakdown then it picks up again when brian goes into his solo before they go into the last verse I think it is a very good track. Now, this album is, granted, said five singles off it. This album was huge in the UK. Huge. Because that was the thing. They were losing their star power here, but they were getting bigger in the rest of the world, particularly the UK. I recall back in 89, I was reading Billboard a lot. And back then, they'd actually put in the British top 40. And all of those singles hit 20, at least the top 25. So this was a huge album in the UK. Maybe that is why they put that back out as a double mm -hmm. disc edition, because it was so huge in the UK here and only went gold. But I'm, th I'm wondering if it was because of that UK success. So The Invisible Man, you would think something that's just so synth heavy um, that I wouldn't like it. But it's catchy. Like you, Todd, I think songs three through six is where it's at here. Um, it's, it's, it's just catchy, like 
so simple, so robotic, but it works. Breakthrough. Now, Breakthrough is interesting because it has that acapella beginning. The verse isn't so hot, but the chorus is fantastic. I, I think that chorus is what really makes that song excellent. Now, from here, hmm, not so much into it. Um, Rain Must Fall and Scandal, they're just layered in sense. I don't think those songs stand out at all. They never resonated with me. My Baby Does Me, I'll be honest, I don't think that's as good as most of the songs on Hot Space. I, I don't even know if it, I mean, it, it's Brian's little guitar work in the background. It's like the only thing on it I like at all. <laughs> now, wasn't all worth it? That's a great closer. That neoclassical riff there at the beginning. Um, you got those layered vocals that work very well. And, you know, in hindsight, you know, Freddie was going through what he was going through. He might, he's thinking this might be the last time people hear me. Um, it's a very strong closer on this album um as far as the bonus tracks and when you bought the original from capital it just said extra tracks yeah i always liked hang on in there that's right. um I, I like it i'm not don't love it but i like it chinese torture that's mm, it's torture to get through and um <laughs> and yeah, it doesn't do anything for me either yeah it, 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 it's it's bad folks um, and 12 inch version of Invisible Man. If you like that little repetitive bass synth, synth bass there, you'll you'll dig it. Um, I'm going to give this a seven because what I do like on here, I really really like. I think the title song and I want it all are superb. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on here I'm not too crazy about, but you know, it's it's decent. I mean. At least we got more variety on here than we had on Kind of Magic, which I think was really slow and poppy, like way too much in my opinion. So seven for the miracle for me. All right. Okay. All right. So, all right. So I'm going to jump in on the miracle. And I have a very similar uh, review as John. Uh, so it's going to be kind of repetitive here, but I just, I do, we all agree that party is a really weak opener. Uh, it's kind of a crazy weird way to start the record. Um, Cause Shogi ship, it sounds like a Mario Kart um, character or something. I don't know who that is, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, I really, it kind of picks up at the end with that riff where it kind of Brian comes in with that massive riff at the end. You're like, well, why didn't we start with that? Like why it kind of ends really cool and you're like oh all right what well, it took a while to get there though so not huge again a sort of generic rocker i i feel like on these records in past records they were a rock band dabbling in pop on these albums it feels like they're a pop band dabbling in rock that's just kind of my vibe sometimes with these albums um but um the miracle oh my god as we as been said awesome i love the miracle uh really great song um I just, there's something about it. I love the lyrics. I love the feel of it. I love the way it's written. I love the vocals when they do that whole, it's a miracle. And they're just this huge harmony going on for, Oh, I love that. So cool. Um, I want it all. Another great song. Another really, really good queen rocker. It doesn't feel generic on that one. I like it. Uh, Invisible man. I, I do. It's grown on me a little. I first, I really did. I just, it still kind of bugs me that whole, you know, that whole little sample thing they do that I'm in the invisible man, whatever that, I just, that just drives me crazy. I just don't like that. It sounds so dated, but I do like Davy Gallagher calls that a doink. Yeah. Whatever that is, <laughs> but, but he also loves it like me, but it's like a synth or so. I don't know what it is, but it just, I don't know. I guess it's, you know, it, but the song has grown on me. I do like Todd said, I really love the shout outs. I love that Freddie Mercury. And, you know, John Deacon, I love that's really fun. Like, you can tell they're having fun with this track. I love that. Uh, Breakthrough is another one that's really grown on me. When I first heard it, I was like, eh, it's okay. And then the more I listened to it, I was like, oh, I do this song. Yeah, I like this song. So Breakthrough is another really strong one. Um, and I love the vocals on Breakthrough. I just think their vocals are just fantastic on that. Um, Rain Must Fall, 
like you said, eh, eh, it's okay. Scandal, it's okay. It's kind of repetitive, in my opinion. It's it's okay, but it kind of needs like more to it. There needs to be more to the song. Um, my baby does me, yeah. Sounds like hot space B side or something. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It just doesn't do much for me. Uh, but was it all worth that? I love so I love the closer. So I think the highs on this record are really high. I think the the songs that I like, I really love. Like, so there are some really really high high spots on this record. So due to those high spots, I'm going to give it a six out of ten. So and you know, it's funny. Uh, I think this is what I think this is kind of what uh, uh, makes people have negative feelings about these records is that it's almost as if. My baby does me is the don't lose your head of this album. Yes, yes. <laughs> in that in that second to last position, there's a head scratcher. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> exactly. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's like like Grant was saying. I don't think it's a well written song either. I just don't think it seems kind of lazy to me. That's just my opinion. And they had more. Yeah, they had, they had more, more badly more written bad. songs. <laughs> no, no, they had better songs than that. Oh, they did. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, as. As uh, and another thing I wanted to say real quickly about the, the the demo sessions on the deluxe version of that, it's really cool to hear them with the tape rolling, just kind of like noodling, and then just start playing, and you realize that even in the eighties they were still this monstrous machine that they still sounded like Queen, and so there are yeah. a couple of parts that come close to sounding like jams where you just kind of go, whoa, can you imagine being in that room? Yes. I mean, I couldn't imagine it. I would love to be watching Queen record. I would just be in yeah. heaven. I would be in heaven. And it's so funny to listen to Freddie, like when he does his little, okay, could you please roll that back, please? Like, right. just, listen to him, just, <laughs> just listen to him talk. And it's just like, you're like, oh my God, it's Freddie Mercury. And he, he, um, you know, I think obviously they made a ton of videos for this album because they knew they couldn't tour it at this point. So, I mean, I think yeah. Todd was saying that's the back story of the miracle is that they knew that Freddie was compromised at this point. And they and it, and I think all the all the tracks are are credited to Queen. It's not there's not you know, they're not individual uh, credits, uh, even though we know we're like, yeah, that's a Roger song. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a Brian song. You can kind of tell who's running it. But because we we're all huge fans, we can kind of tell. But it's I think on the CD it just says Queen, written by Queen, everything. Um, so um, so yeah, so I think that um, wh so what I didn't keep score. I should have written it down. Uh, I I'm trying to think with the with the total score here. What is the? Uh, I think the miracle may have except for Grant. Grant went four. Grant was I four. I was I was nine, and John was seven. Is that talk right? about being all over the map? Yeah, four. I five, got three, the seven. scores. I remember them. Well, if you oh, okay, want a good. cumulative, yeah, let's cumulative. What do we got? Okay, we got a six and a half for the miracle. Okay, and we got a five point seven five for a kind of magic. Wow. All right. So thank you for doing that. That's appreciative. Well, then I'm <laughs> spot on, pretty much for it's a kind of magic. Okay. Yeah. So 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 the miracle is winning by a nose. Seems like. What'd you say the miracle was? I guess six point five because we had a a four, yeah. a seven, a nine, and a six. I was a spoiler with my nine. Right, yeah, that screwed it all up. <laughs> Todd, the nine. I, that was that. Was, I did that on purpose. He did it totally? Did it? He's like, I'm giving this a nine. I it just for me because I didn't know what people were going to rate these. We all hear stuff differently, so. Hey, maybe some of this later Queen catalog well, Grant, you is were, great, you were, and I just don't get it. No, but you were on with some of your some of your criticisms. Are you were on with them? Shit, I mean, yes. yeah. I mean, here, here's, I like it's a kind of magic better. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, I love. I think One Vision is better better than anything. I mean, it's like such a good song. It's probably better than anything that's on any both of them. Well, yeah. you know what I mean. So so here's my here's my fantasy of okay Queen takes a, a another year off and they make one album out of these two, so let's just here's my here's my here's my uh, my perfect oh God. my perfect eighties record one vision kind of magic who wants to live forever princes of the universe the miracle I want it all breakthrough was it all worth it friends will be friends that's put the invisible it. man on there and I'm in yeah <laughs> put it on as a bonus track. 
Yeah, friends will be friends. Uh, that's, that's pretty good, inch. though. The that's pretty inch. good. The I like that. Awesome record, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, but so I'm should glad, we reveal? I'm glad we have what, both. I'm glad we have both. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad should we, we reveal what our what our picks are? Or I guess the score is kind of told. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Go ahead, Grant. You're, so it would be for yeah. me. It would be this. We know for Grant, it would be it would be kind of magic. And right? I didn't. I'm surprised. Yeah, <laughs> I like it better. Yeah. Go figure. But it's not by much, Grant. For me, it's not by I, much. Well, they're they're very. It's yeah. It is what it is. It's pretty close for me. It's, it's like close. It's close. I mean, who? Like I said, I think the highs on this album are good too. One Vision, kind of magic. You know, who wants to live forever is amazing. I mean, so who wants to live forever is better than those two tracks are better than anything on the Miracle, for me. There you Except go. for the miracle. Except for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's 80s queen. It's 80s queen. It's 80s queen. Anything your mileage, happen. your mileage may vary. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So well, I'm glad we did this. We've been talking about it forever and we finally did it. I love it. At least we got it, we got it out there. We we're putting it out in the universe. Uh that's right. We're princes of the universe. There you go. <laughs> thank you very much everybody that's it that's a wrap for 80s queen kind of magic versus a miracle you you heard the outcome and uh mileage as grant said mileage may vary uh i in the comments please let us know what you think what's your favorite of the two what do you like some people may say grant is right on i agree with him 100 percent. some people may say todd is like right on the money the miracles in 9.5 out of 10 so you know you never know so uh, thank you very much. I hope, thank you to the panel. Appreciate you guys coming. Thank you. <laughs> or you can listen to Brad if you want to. Um, thank you to my panel. I appreciate you guys for coming on. You guys are the best. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Yep. And you, Tom. Uh, and uh, let's, you know, we'll see you next time on Curlless Mania. I appreciate it. Take care. All right. See ya. See ya.